hello guys now you're welcome to my channel and here we're going to pick examples on the Volterra integral equation and we're going to solve them so these two are examples of the Volterra integral equation now the first one we can actually we can easily see that is of the first kind okay, because um, the function the unknown function only appears under the integral sign now the second one is of the second kind okay and you actually see because you see the unknown function u of x outside the integral sign as well and it's also inside the integral sign okay so um these two the differences they are not they are not so much different from each other but uh with the first one we're going to solve it in a similar way as solving the second one okay so in this video, we are going to solve the first one and in the next video, we are going to solve the second one. There's only going to be a slight change, a slight difference between the two of them. So let's follow. So solution, we have our first one. We have, let me rewrite a question from zero to X cos of X minus T, Y at T, T x squared over 2. Okay, so in solving for the solution or in solving this Volterra equation or integral equation, what you are trying to do is you are trying to break this integral equation down into a differential equation, which is a Cauchy problem. Then once you are able to get a differential equation, you solve that differential equation and the, so the solution becomes the answer to your problem. Okay, yeah. So in here, from what we did the other time, trying to find a solution to the um, Volterra the, um, integral equation, we try to differentiate the whole function, the whole equation, right? So let's do that really pr pretty quick over here. So we are going to have the derivative with respect to x of 0 to x cosine of x minus t y of t dt and that's going to be equal to the integral oh, oh sorry go back wait mine that's going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of x squared all on two so it's very easy to do the right differentiation so here we know this whole thing as our f of x t. This whole thing, so we know that first of all we have to look for the uh, functional value at x and the upper limits. So we put in x into this whole thing. Then we multiply by the derivative of the upper limit. Then we do subtract it by the derivative of um, the functional value of this at x and the lower limit which is zero. We put that here. Then we differentiate zero with respect to x as well. Then minus, we push this one inside. All right, so let's do that pretty quick. So we have the functional value at x, x, okay? So that's going to be cosine of x. Whatever we see, t, we put in x, y of x, okay? Then we multiply this by the derivative of x minus. You're applying the same formula, the Leibniz formula. We have cos of x minus 0 times y at 0 multiplying the derivative of 0 dx. Then we add it to the integral from 0 to x. Of the partial derivative with respect to x for the function we have so the function is cos x minus t cos x minus t y of t all dt okay and that should be equal to the derivative on the right hand side which gives you x 
okay yeah so now let's do this this actually gives you cost zero so we have cost zero y of x times one minus this whole thing is actually going to be zero because the derivative of this gives you zero so i i'm not going to write this whole thing this is going to be zero then plus the integral from zero to x now let's differentiate this partially with respect to x we are going to have um this is going to the derivative of whatever you see inside is going to be one with respect to x one then we differentiate sine cos that gives us negative sine so this is going to be the negative sign mm -hmm, of x minus t times y of t because y of t is just a constant when we are differentiating with respect to x then all this d t right and that should be equal to x okay so this side cos 0 is sine 90 which is 1 so we actually have this side being just y of x then minus i'm going to bring i'm going to put up this part is going to be zero so i'm going to put out this negative outside so i have negative integral from 0 to x sine of x minus t y of t dt and that should be equal to x so we are done with our differentiation over here we are done with this differentiation okay so we have y of x being equal to when we send this one on the right hand side that should have been the equation like the solution to the differential equation but we still see an integral over here and unfortunately you can't do anything about this integral you can't substitute anything here to clear this integral okay so once you haven't cleared this integral you have to go on to do another in, um, differentiation of the whole um, equation again the main aim here is to clear the integral okay so that we have a differential equation and even if on um you know if, if you see with our first differentiation right here if we had had y of x, then we have um, being equal to just x, that would have been the solution to the integral equation. But then we still have this integral over here. So it means once the integral persists, we have to continue to differentiate. Okay. So we are going to go on to differentiate again. And easily, this side I'm going to have y prime of x minus. Here we go again. This is going to be the functional the functional value at x and x that's going to be sine x minus x y of x mm -hmm. and multiply by the derivative of the upper limits which has been done so that's going to be one so we are differentiating x with respect to x which gives us one minus um the lower limit that of the lower limits and that's going to give you in the end we are going to differentiate with respect to zero just like we did here so that part is going to be zero so i'm not really going to write it again you can try it on your own then plus the integral from zero to x times the partial derivative hold on times the partial derivative del del x of um what is it sine of x minus t y of t y of t all the t okay Ooh. and this whole thing should be equal to we are differentiating the whole equation so differentiate x with respect to x and that gives you one okay so now let's go we then have we then have y prime of x minus sine 0 y of x times 1 minus 0 plus 
now let's do the differentiation over here the differentiation over here becomes you differentiate whatever is inside here with respect to us that gives you one then you differentiate this whole thing which becomes um, cos right so we then have one times the cosine of x minus t y of t now you have to always know that the differentiation is with respect to x so y of t is just a constant okay so it actually comes out then you do the differentiation so d t and that should be equal to one so now let's simplify the whole thing we have y prime of x y prime of x minus sine zero is actually sine zero is cos 90 so this part goes to zero so we have minus all in brackets i should have closed the square bracket away so all in brackets this part one to zero so integral of 0 to x cosine x minus t y of t dt okay and that should be equal to one all right so this is getting simpler and simpler so let's see if we have gotten rid of the integral sign it's still here hmm so we can actually see that since it's a transcendental function which is sine in our question it was cos we will continue to differentiate and we will be seeing cos sine cos sine so invariably we don't see this one vanishing at all hmm so what then do we do we can actually compare this over here to the what we have here in the question right so you see this being the same as that this is the same as that okay so we also know that this is equal to x squared over 2 so it means that i can replace this whole thing with this x squared over 2. interesting so i have y prime of x minus x squared all on 2 that should be equal to 1. okay so this becomes our Cauchy problem in our differential equation. So you have y prime of x equals 1 plus x squared all on 2. Wow. So this is what we are supposed to solve. Okay. So this is a Cauchy problem. You have your um, first order differential equation, linear. Yeah, it's linear. Then um, we are supposed to get our initial condition. Since this is the first order um, differential equation, we only need y at a certain constant okay so what constant are we going to use now with me anytime pick the lower limits as the constant you're going to use okay yes and i'm going to show you why so we need to find y of zero so we need to find y of zero that's going to be called to how do we get y of zero what's going to be that so in all the equations we've we've gotten over here where do we see y of x we search for where we see y of x because we need y of zero so this is y prime of x that's not what we want all right so this is y of x this y of x is actually minus this that should be equal to x right so y of x is actually going to be equal to x plus the whole of this so now let's see y of zero wherever we see x in this whole thing we put in zero so we're going to have y of zero minus the integral from zero to zero this part is going to be zero so once we have the integral at the same point from zero to the same point we know that it's going to be zero so this whole part goes to zero and that's going to be equal to x is zero to so zero okay so it means that our y of zero is zero it is zero okay so that's what we do we search for where y of x is then we put in zero to find out our y the, the initial condition okay so now that we have the initial condition we can solve this equation simply so we have um y of x and i know that you're going to know how to do it that's going to be the integral of one plus x squared on two dx hmm. 
okay yes so now we're going to have y of x being equal to x plus x to the power 3 divided by 6 plus c so with our initial condition we can look for our c so y of 0 is going to be equal to 0 plus 0 plus c plus c and we expect that y of 0 should be 0 so this should be equal to 0 so invariably are saying c is equal to 0 so we put that back into this equation and we get that y of x is going to be x plus x to the power 3 all on 6 plus 0 which is this so this becomes our solution to the integral equation all right so this is the end of this video in the next video we are going to solve the um, other question all right so see you in the next video